This is the 2021 Bronco Sport. There's been a lot of excitement about this name Bronco. This is the Sport. There will be a two-door and a four-door version coming out, but today we're gonna drive the Outer Banks version. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot more than cool car reviews. We give you first looks at new vehicles and we give you car smarts because we believe knowledge is power. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. This is the 2021 Bronco Sport. There's a lot of excitement and there are different trim levels. You've got your entry level with the smaller engine and then you've got your Badlands with the bigger motor. Today, we're gonna cover the Outer Banks with the smaller motor, we will cover the bigger motor in a different review. We're gonna cover this vehicle in ways you won't get when you go in the dealership. They're gonna try and sell you on the car because that's their job. We're gonna give you information on performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating, technology, features, design, quality. We'll cover cargo, we'll give you value, and in the end, we will give you a car coach reports total. We'll also list the competitors down below and links to those reviews so that you can make a good decision because we don't want you to have buyer's remorse. Let's take a look at the 2021 Bronco Sport. This is the Outer Banks edition. The entry level vehicles that have the smaller 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Let's see how it does in the normal drive mode. Not bad. You're looking at 181 horsepower, 190 pound feet of torque with a towing capacity of around 2,000 pounds. This is not meant to be a race car. This is meant to be a vehicle you would drive every day. And the fuel economy is not bad. It comes with a combined of around 26 miles to the gallon. But overall, as far as performance, the ability to put your foot in it and have some get up and go, it does that because of the turbocharged engine. This 1.5 liter is a great base engine. If you're looking at more performance, and you want a bigger motor and more towing capacity, you're going to have to step up to the higher trim levels. It's always important to note when you have these three cylinder engines, they're going to give you better fuel economy than if you had just a regular engine that was just a four cylinder. So everybody's got the two liter engine, everyone's got smaller engines, but you have to look at the fuel economy overall in addition to the performance and that ability to put your foot in it and have that get up and go. And it does have that actually. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the performance of this vehicle compared to other cars in this category. And remembering that this is an all wheel drive, all Bronco sports are all wheel drive. And with that, I was pretty impressed with what was available. And when it comes to performance, this Bronco sport earned an eight. If you were to drive this Bronco sport every day, driving it around your neighborhood, and then maybe on the weekends going camping or a little off-roading or just having a little bit of fun, this vehicle is very capable. Because when you're talking about handling of a vehicle, GOAT means go anywhere, and, and that really does it. Because that's what a GOAT does. It goes literally everywhere. Now, when you're looking at the different drive modes and you turn the dial, you'll see that it has your normal mode, your eco mode, your sand mode. So if you're going on the beach, awesome. I'm there with you on that. And then you can go further and you've got your slippery mode and your sport mode. Now, again, this all depends on what you're gonna do. Now, they're not in an order that makes sense to me, but the slippery mode makes sense here in Buffalo Winters in the sport mode, a little bit more fun to drive. Now, I'm not gonna go over the speed limit because I know you guys are gonna yell at me in the comments below because that's what you like to do. But when you're looking at the vehicle as far as handling and parkability, it's pretty average in the category. If you're comparing it to the RAV4 or the Jeep, and you're gonna say, you know, which one handles better? They're all gonna handle well. If you're gonna go off-roading, which this vehicle can do light off-roading, it would be equivalent to a Jeep. And that makes it pretty average in the middle of the category. Jeep has always been the leader in the off-road, not in all their vehicles, but in this vehicle is sort of comparable to like a Renegade. It's not really comparable to a Cherokee or even anything in the CJ category. But when you're looking at this vehicle, as far as performance, comes with all wheel drive, has the ability to go literally anywhere that the average person's going to be driving it. And I think that's really important. But as far as brakes on the roadway, they're average. Handling is good. And what's interesting is how the steering works on this. So when you're driving this down the road, it's pretty easy to steer. But when you get into the corner, it actually makes it easier to steer. It's the way it's designed. Overall, the handling is nimble and it's pretty easy to drive. And that's really impressive when it comes to this Bronco Sport. But it fits in the middle of the category. When it comes to handling, 
it earns a five. When it comes to safety, a top priority in any vehicle, including this Bronco Sport, all the vehicles come with Copilot 360. So that gives you a lot of safety features, which are standard. And that's impressive because that's not typically something you would get in some domestic products. Typically, that's something the Japanese and the Koreas, Koreans do. They just put every single safety feature out there and they don't force you to buy up to get the safety. That is included and that is excellent. Part of that Copilot 360 is active safety features, which includes forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitor, lane keeping assist, and also with the Copilot Assist Plus, it has lane centering, adaptive cruise control, navigation, and it also has the traffic sign recognition that allows you know, the adaptive cruise control to work with you. One of the things it doesn't have is an around view camera, which is kind of a shame because I really like this vehicle a lot. And I wish that it had the around view camera, especially in the Outer Banks edition, but the safety is standard on this vehicle and that is excellent. And when it comes to safety on this Bronco Sport, it earns an eight. When it comes to visibility, there are some limitations you need to be aware of. This front windshield is a little bit square and shorter than some of the other vehicles in the category. That may not bother you. For me, it's not a problem, but again, everybody's different. So it's important that you see because 80% of your driving decisions are based on visibility. And the visibility is actually pretty good for this vehicle and it's a very high riding vehicle. So you should have some confidence on the road you can see where you're going. The sills are right about where they need to be. They're a little bit on the high side as far as putting your armrest there. But that's part of, you know, want that cool look, but you also want to be able to see out the window, especially if you're in the second row. Looking out the back, there's one thing you're going to see is there is a little Easter egg right there. And also West Ford's got their courtesy here because they're helping us out here today. You got the headrests in the way, not too bad. When you put the vehicle in reverse, you get a backup camera that's standard now on every vehicle. So you need to keep that in mind. It's not an around view camera and you need to find out what works for you. When you're looking at the visibility overall based on the mirrors and what you can see out the front and the sides and what's available to you, it earns a seven. When it comes to seating, I always say no matter what you buy, this is the most important seat because this is where you live and we're all built differently. So you have to find out what fits you properly. Now, I do believe that lumbar support should be standard on both sides. In this case, it's only available in this seat, which is the driver's seat. And that's weird because this is the luxury edition. It should be available. It's not an expensive option. So make sure to let whatever brand is that you love to let them know we want lumbar in the passenger seat and they're starting to add that in because they're listening to you. And why is that important? Because we need to be comfortable in the seat. It's not because you have back problems. A lot of people ask me that. I don't have any back problems. I want to be comfortable, especially on a long drive. This is a family vehicle. Are you going camping, off-roading? Are you going to a racetrack? What are we doing? Whatever it is it might be, you want to be comfortable right here. So number one thing you should be looking for is adjustable height seat belts. This has that. And why do you want that? Because you don't want this seat belt cutting you across the neck. And that's one of the things that not every brand has. So it's important that you look for that. Next, besides lumbar support, you want the adjustability to raise up or raise down on the seats. And again, this is something that you need to sit in the seats, both driver and passenger seat, especially if at some point someone else is driving, that you feel comfortable. With that being said, we've set the passenger seat for me. I'm 5'8". Let's see what it looks like in the second row. First thing, I set this seat for me on 5'8". There's pretty good knee room. If you're six feet tall or longer in the legs than I am, it may not be as comfortable. It's not a ton of room. Remember, this is like the size of an escape. Now, overall, because they raised this roof area, which you will see when we discuss this in design, there is tons of headroom. And this is great if you've got child safety seats or booster seats, the kids can see out the window, but then they also have that headroom, which a lot of vehicles don't have. That's also very important. In addition, there are these little zippered pouches right here in front of you. It's like a little backpack. You can put things in. It's nice. It's nicely designed and it's a good safe place to keep things that not every vehicle has. Now if you go to the higher trim levels and we'll talk about this when we do that review, this passenger seat has storage underneath it. It does not have it in the Outer Banks edition. That's important to note. In the doors you've got pockets, you've got your window lift and a teeny little speaker right here from Bang & Olufsen. I wish it was bigger. I wish it was better audio in this car. There's lights here as well up above and behind the center console, there's two vents and a 12 volt outlet. Pull down this armrest. There are two cup holders inside, pretty easy to use. And of course, seating for three. When you're looking at the comfort, these seats tend to be on the flat side and the materials are mixed. It's a vinyl with a little bit of like eco cloth 
and then some perforated material. So it's an interesting mix. I'm not sure how it's gonna hold up over the long haul, and we'll talk about that when it comes to quality. But when you're looking at the vehicle from a seating perspective, it's a little disappointing. I love all the little features, especially when it comes to like these little pockets and everything on the side of the, the seats. It's good for phones and whatever else it might be. But overall, when you're looking at seating, it earns a five. When you enter the vehicle, you can see that it gives you a whole presentation, which is really, really cool. I want to remind you you're driving a very cool vehicle so technology is pretty cool when it comes to this and it does a whole little presentation in front of the gauges which is really really nice then you go to press that engine start and it'll give you a whole presentation now when you hit those different goat modes which is the goes on all terrain you can see that it will change normal eco sport that's cool slippery which we have that here right now in the buffalo winters isn't that cool i love it and then sport and it changes the gauge in front of you it changes a lot of other things what it does not change is your center screen you're not getting a center screen change of information on the outer banks so as far as technology, you get an eight inch screen. It is standard on all vehicles. Now what you are getting, and I'll turn the audio system on for you. We'll just turn the volume off so you don't have to listen to that. You've got the navigation screen. So it loads the screen, it's a little slow. This is a SYNC 3 system. I'm a little bit disappointed. We're supposed to get the SYNC 4, the newest, greatest in the new Bronco. You've got your phone, your navigation. This is telling you where we are. We're at West Hereford, and we appreciate them letting us borrow this vehicle. And they've got quite a few of them in stock. So if you're looking for a Bronco, I would check with them. You've got your auto off down here and a couple other neat little things we'll cover in features. But overall, as far as the gauges in front of you, you can change the information that you want. This is not anything unusual when it comes to a Ford product. It makes you feel very comfortable. You can set your display information if you want, set that up however you want and all those controls are on your steering wheel. But overall, when you're looking at technology, it's easy to use, it makes a lot of sense, there's nothing really fancy, you're not getting you know, something that's gonna be really hard to work with. When you're looking at the technology for this Bronco Sport, it earns an eight. When you're looking at features, first off, they remind you you're driving a Bronco with this cool Bronco key and that Bronco logo. There's a lot of that. You'll note that there's not a lot of Ford logos in this vehicle, which I find very interesting. And that's part of the features. Now you'll look at this pretty basic steering wheel. It has all the controls we talked about in features, nothing over the top, really easy to use. And then of course your cruise control here, your lane departure, part of your safety features, that's all easy to use. When it comes to the stocks, they have everything right here. I find this is very interesting, easy to use, nothing unusual, which is good and makes it easy for a consumer to use it. When you're looking at the controls to the left, you've got your hatch. You've also got all of your automatic headlights and then the adjustments for the brightness. And then the door has got your normal controls. Nothing that you would say, oh, I can't use this. No memory seating in the outer banks. That's one thing you might wanna note. Now, when you go to this eight inch screen, it has some of the absolute basic things that you'd wanna use. You touch the screen, you've got audio right here. Pretty basic audio system. Yes, you can upgrade this stuff. Your phone connection, which does have sync, which I really like, it's one of the best on the market. So that's why I gave it a higher tech rating. There's your map. You can get your apps, your Ford apps, which you can have in your phone, pretty easy to use, and then all of your settings. Further down, you've got the auto off, my favorite thing to shut off, because I think you save about a tablespoon of fuel. And in this car, you're already getting 26 miles to the gallon as an average fuel economy. It's a little different with the bigger engine, but this is the smaller engine. And because it's a 1.5, it's not gonna be that much worth it. Here's your adjustments for your audio. You're on off. A nice little storage bin. It's got a little rubberized mat, which I think is nice, actually. Good place to put things so they don't slide. I find this interesting mixture of materials. It's like rubberized, hard rubber, and then you find like this plastic. It's an interesting mix. I know that they wanted this to be rugged so you could wash it out. It's good if you got a lot of kids or you're going off-roading. You'll see your climate controls here. Heated seats, which is great. And this is for your heated steering wheel, which is needed here. Dual climate control, excellent. And then you look here, you've got wireless charging. Again, that's part of tech also, USB-C and USB, and then your regular outlet. Always good to have this available for a radar detector for 12 volt and storage. 
Going further back, you've got your regular dial, and there would be a manual on the on the higher end in the off-road version for the Badlands. In this case, this is just low. So that's your version of a Prindle. You've got your two cup holders and a little holder here for something smaller. I don't know what you would put there. And this is your parking brake. And that is your auto hold, which people are getting really used to. This is your goat modes. When you turn this dial, very simple to turn, it goes from sand to normal. You have eco, you've got sport, and then you have slippery. And you can keep turning these to different modes based on what you need. Very easy to use. By the way, talking about materials, this is an interesting mix of vinyl and cloth material, and then you got this perforated material. It's a weird mix. It's like they weren't really sure. And then, of course, you got your Bronco Sport floor mats. What I do love is this Bang & Olufsen b and audio system. That is top of the line, and that is a huge plus when it comes to a vehicle like this. Also, you'll note that this different materials I find very interesting. It's weird. It's good to clean, easy to clean, that's for sure. Now, going further back into this soft material center console is a gigantic glove box inside a USB-C and a USB connection, which is good in a spot for a pen. Pretty simple and easy to use. In the back seat, there is just vents and another 12 volt outlet but there's a lot of storage in this vehicle because that's what this Bronco's about. And for features, it earns a seven. When you're looking at the design of the Bronco, it is different looking than some of the other vehicles in the category. It's more boxy, it's more rugged looking, and it's a little more muscular as well. Starting off with this front end of the vehicle, you can see the LED lights, the Bronco logo. They're not telling you it's a Ford notice, they're telling you it's a Bronco because it has brand value. You'll also notice that the grille is functional, and then further down, this is the, this is the Outer Banks, not the Badlands, so it's a little different. It has a, what they call, I call it a makeshift skid plate, you're probably not going to be off-roading this much because this is the luxury edition. So it's a little bit different and it looks different. So as you move your way around to the side here, 18 inch wheels are standard. And remember, all Broncos are all wheel drive. There are no two wheel drives available in the Bronco Sport. It'll be different when the Bronco comes out. Now moving your way along, you can see this look of what was the old Bronco Sport. If you ever remember those from back then, it was more boxy. And you're seeing that boxy look in homage, should we say, to the past. But it is completely different. Now this is a luxury vehicle. It's based on a Ford existing SUV platform. So you're not gonna see that taking off the doors and the roof like you would see in the Badlands. This is about luxury. You got that Outer Banks edition to remind you, yeah, I'm driving the luxury edition because I want that rugged look but I do want the luxury for everyday use. One thing you'll notice when you look across the top, standard roof rails, and there's a bump right here. This bump is for head clearance for the second row, because one of the things you don't want is to eliminate that space for the second row passengers. Whether they be adults or otherwise, it's also good for cargo. Note that every single thing about this vehicle, there are little Bronco logos in some neat places they call them Easter eggs, and that's part of the design, and you'll see them throughout the vehicle. Sometimes we won't even catch them until later. So you'll notice that rugged design here. As you work your way to the back, you'll notice that this panel, essentially, could limit some of your visibility out the back. That's why there's an around view camera. So across the back, you can press glass or door. When you press the glass, you can then just open the glass if you need to put something in. Smart idea, sort of like the original Bronco. However, if you want to open the door, you just open the door. Very easy to do. And you got to watch, it is a good size door, and that is part of the design. But they've done a lot of neat things, and we'll talk about that in cargo. One of the things I like is the Bronco Sport, and this is the only place on the vehicle you will see a Ford logo. You don't see it on the inside, you don't see it on the outside, just this one spot, because Ford didn't want to take over the brand. Bronco is what it is. Note that cool design, taillights, very rugged, very outdoor, and this back material is made of a rubberized material because if you're gonna outdoor this vehicle, it's probably gonna get scratched from trees, camping, whatever it is, life in general, so you have to keep that in mind. Class three hitch hauls up to about 2,000 pounds. This vehicle is really nice and clean design, and for design, it earns a nine. When it comes to quality of this vehicle, you have to look at more than just the build quality, which is excellent. The paint quality is very good. But on the inside, the mixed materials and the quality of those materials and just the overall build was a little on the disappointing side. I know there's a lot of excitement about this car, but when you're looking at this price category in that $36,000 range, the way this vehicle is loaded, 
you have to start looking at its value compared to its competitors. So for quality, we gave it an eight. When you come around to the back of this vehicle, there are two ways to open the hatch, like we said, through the glass or through the door. And when you hit the door and you open it, you'll notice right away there's a lot of space back here, 36 and a half cubic feet. If you put the seats down, there's enough for two mountain bikes. And that was one of the biggest things they were talking about, is you've got storage back here. They give you rubber mats along with this, but there's a lot of neat things that they add that you don't get elsewhere. Let's start off with back here. First off, the seats can only be closed by hitting these buttons on the side here and that puts the seats down. You just release it and push it down. But there's some neat things I wanna show you right here. There is two lights here with a little Bronco logo. Again, one of those little Easter eggs that I keep talking about that you get to see as you look around the vehicle. There are also two hooks here. These are actually really good hooks for holding down gear and a 12 volt outlet. And there's tie downs back here as well. On this side, you have the ability to turn the light on on its own. But I wanna show you where these lights are because there's two more tie downs. They're right here, right here on the hatch. And they're adjustable, so you can slide them in or out. So if you're using it for tailgating, camping, you can see your gear, and those little lights are right here, and they're LED. A lot of neat things, a lot of features they thought about, which is why we gave it the rating of features that we did. But overall, when you're looking at a vehicle like this that starts in that mid-20s range, this Outer Banks vehicle came in around $36,000. That is a little bit high in that category when you're looking at the Jeep and the Toyota and the other things that are out there in this category. You really have to bring these options to consumers. This has a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty, which is typical of all Fords, and of course, the longer rust-through protection, and you get your road warranty, so you're really comparable to all the categories. When you're looking at value as a whole, this Bronco earns an eight. When you're looking at all 10 categories for the new 2021 Bronco Sport, it does offer a lot. There's been a lot of hype around this vehicle. And in reality, I'm really looking forward to the two-door and four-door Bronco. They're going to be really big fighters for that Jeep because Jeep has always controlled that category. This is a vehicle that's designed for someone who wants something different. They don't want those smooth lines that you see on most vehicles. You want something that's more rugged looking, and you're actually going to use it for that. And this vehicle does have that, especially in those different GOAT adjustments or the drive modes like we discussed. What I do like about this vehicle is it looks different. It doesn't say Ford in your face. It says, hey, I'm driving a Bronco Sport. When you're looking at the Bronco in the back, it's something that sort of reminds you that you're driving something that has a heritage behind it. It's not just a name. So Ford did a great job with that. And I also want to thank West for Ford for letting us use this vehicle. They're in Buffalo, New York. Contact them and they can get you a really good deal on these. They have quite a few on inventory and they're kind of hard to find these days because the demand is quite high. Now, when you're looking at this vehicle overall in all 10 categories, there were some things that I wish were better, like the SYNC system should be a SYNC 4, not the SYNC 3, which is the newest. Is it making a difference? No, because in this price point, you're kind of looking at what the competition has. And if you start adding too much into this car, it then prices itself out of the category. So from a pro standpoint, I, I like the bigger engine versus a smaller engine. I think the handling is acceptable in this category. There are some areas where it's lacking. Safety and quality are good. Again, like we go through each category, you can check that out in the chapters down below. We break it down on what you need to know so you're not surprised when you get in the vehicle or you buy it and find out later. Overall, the car coach reports total for the 2021 Bronco Sport the Outer Banks edition earns a 73. Don't forget to check out the list of all the competitors down below and reviews to those so that when you go to buy one vehicle or the other, we want to know which one you bought. Put it in the comments down below. If you got value from this video, make sure to like it and share it with your friends. And if you put a question down below in a lot of areas, I couldn't cover every single thing today. I would love to answer your question because we want you to walk into the dealership and make good decisions no matter whether you buy the Bronco Sport or you buy one of the competitors. We're always putting out new information, especially about Bronco and some of the other vehicles that are on the market. You can follow me on all forms of social media at Lauren Fix, and we're having a great time with our podcast, Total Car Score. Make sure to check that out because if you like cars, you're going to love this podcast. It's with Carl Brower and Javier Mota, and we look forward to seeing you next time. And hey, check out our website. We have some great new information there as well. Thank you so much for watching.